Hey, this is Brandon with RPG Overviews, and in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the new zine from Planet X Games called The Flactory. So here's the cover. It's available in PDF on DriveThruRPG, and here is a little advertisement for the second issue. Uh, so that's cool. Hopefully this will be a continuing thing that Levi Combs, uh, who I've done an interview with on the channel, if you want to check that interview out, we had a lot of fun talking, uh, is going to be putting these out for us. So let's take a look. It is for the OSR. It's on DriveThruRPG and PDF. Uh, so you can pick it up if you want, fairly cheap. It's got a whole bunch of art throughout it and a whole bunch of different stuff. Adventures, magical items, creatures, all sorts of things. So here is an interesting magical item. This is the Chaos Throne. It is a huge throne uh, that's big enough for an ogre, it says. And it has all these different gems in it. And you push a gem and a certain effect happens. Some of these are very, very powerful. It says the throne can be used this way three to four times before resetting and disappearing forever. Maybe it reappears somewhere else is what I would think about it, but really cool art for it. Uh, so like the Amethyst, you gain a level. A ruby, your primary attribute is raised by plus two. Uh, Moonstone, a monster of the game master's choice, immediately appears and attacks. So this could just be an absolutely incredible magical item for a king to have uh, and use it at uh, their leisure to wreak havoc or who knows what. Maybe they don't know what these different gems do and uh, they're just going to push one and see what happens. But lose a level, you gain a plus one to all your saving throws. A whole bunch of very powerful things can happen to you on the Chaos Throne. So next we have the Gibbering Thing in the Cellar and other slobbering gelatinous horrors. So it talks about haunted and perilous evil things stir in the darkness waiting for tasty armored morsels of flesh from the surface world to go looking for treasure in places they shouldn't be, what's lurking beneath. And then it gives you some descriptions of some crazy cellar-dwelling horrors. So a stillborn demigod tossed aside in a murderous rage, skipping across dimensions until it unceremoniously landed here. Everything around it either goes mad, physically mutates, or it is otherwise warped by its presence. There is one that is a massive, flabby-lipped mouth full of rows of teeth that has mysteriously manifested on the floor, wall, or ceiling here, gobbling up anything that comes close. So just some neat ideas if you want some sort of terrible creature. And then we have the furious, faithful priest and holy man of renown. So many are the saints and holy men of the world, and not, of, not all of them are created equal. Here's a sampling of legendary clerics and priests from across the ages. So it gives you the name of them, and there might be like a magical item uh, tied to them. So uh, uh, Lathidus here, the Lord of Secrets, he's got this sliver of secrets, a shard of the shin bone of him. Um, it's a minor relic of the church, and so it's got some plus two to some checks and stuff. So some very neat things about uh, some ancient legendary clerics and priests with their items that go along with them, or uh, you know, give you some tidbits to maybe create a um, a bit of adventure around it. So again, some cool art, some cool art throughout it. Here's Gorag, the Horned Ranger, Malthus of the Many Spells. You can see here, uh, this looks to be a wand of some sort. Uh, so very neat. And then we've got magic weapons and sorcerer's blades. So a bunch of different weapons here. Some of them are not extremely powerful, but they're very neat. This one's out this bow here, this dragon's breath bow, is very cool. You roll up, um, it's got a, it's a long bow, bow plus one, uh, and it's attuned to an, a certain kind of evil dragon. You roll a d6 and to find out what the effect and damage is. And uh, yes, very powerful. And then I really like these sections here, the local lore, maybe giving you a little bit more of a... Uh, adventure hook in order to how to use these items into your campaign so very neat again another bow here uh, magic gigaws sorcerers gym jams and whatnot so again um, more magical items here to look at uh, in this section we've got this jar of lies which is pretty interesting and then the you've got this whispers of the weird so again information that you get from this jar here's a little back, back information and as well a way for you to maybe incorporate that into a game session or a campaign they look good but gah 1d10 fiendish potions you'll wish you hadn't drank so you can roll up d10 and there's a bunch of interesting potions here tastes like beef broth with a salty aftertaste acts like a potion of super 
um, Heroism, but all saving throws it versus Magic are at minus four for the next D3 days. I like how it tell, tells you how it tastes. Reeks of copper and gristle, slight metallic aftertaste, or it's flat and tasteless uh, with a slight odor of charged ozone. So some very cool potions here if you need to roll up some neat potions. And then we've got Forbidden Demon Cults from the Outer Void. We've got Yug. I'm not going to try to say some of these names, but again, that's fun demon cult fact. Yug's cultists are decadent cannibals and ritualistically devour the weakest among their numbers once a year, by the, they, be they men, women, or children. So they're pretty rough. Thule, the racked ones, some cool art once again. And I like all the little pieces of art. It definitely helps it. Forbidden spell books and failed prayers of the ancients. So uh, seven veils, seven voids, the testament of Namul. Uh, just a neat, neat little collection there of uh, interesting spell books and prayers. Here's the ravenous wound, which is part of the spell that this thing here can. The three faces of your gath, your gra your gath. I guess is how it said. Uh, it can summon up this creature, right? Or I'm sorry, this is a spell. Uh, that can, is contained within the book. Then you've got Black Bess, Scourge of the High Seas. So this is the stats uh, for a pirate-type character. Obviously, she's got an eye patch. Um, it's a magical eye patch. Has changed hands many times over the last few decades. And she's got some black leather eye patches adorned with skull and crossbones. The eye patch bestows a plus one any saving throw that relies on the quickness and nimble nature of its wearer, as well as negating any penalties for moving or fighting on board a ship as it is being tossed and turned about in the waves. That's very helpful for a pirate type character. And of course, giving you the backstory right here. Then we've got Once Upon a Time in the Grim Hinterlands, three antagonists to set your players on the road to adventure. So Olor, Olork, the Black Friar, or Orlock, I guess. Morgan Blackfeather, got other stats. Pretty normal OSR stats that you could pretty much use with any type of game. Uh, it doesn't really set itself apart, uh, you know, singularly trying to attach itself to any particular game. We've got 1d10 tough SOBs, Roadhouse Hoodlums, Board Adventures, and Mean Old Bastards you might meet in Tavern. So a bunch of different uh, crazy names, and a bunch of them are turds. You roll up a d10. And maybe these guys will uh, buy you a drink, but more than likely they're going to probably try to stab you or punch you or hit you with a stool. So now we've got the Corpse Garden of the Mykonen King. So this is a full little adventure, as you can see, as you're going to be exploring some caves and dealing with these mushroom-type creatures. I've always enjoyed them. Uh, they're very interesting. Some neat art, once again, very reminiscent of the art that uh, for maps that Planet X uh, uses. And as you can see, it's numbered with some cool stuff, and you're going to have a bunch of these mushroom-type people to kill. Then you've got Utos, the Island of the Shattered Moon. And this is going to be uh, you know, a little bit of a small campaign setting right here. You've got six statted-out locations with some art. You're going to have a swamp, a landing. Um, you're going to have an observatory, uh, the Lonely Spire, Dretch Isle for, uh, for want of demons and loot. And then you're going to have the Grindhouse Hex Crawl, number one. So there's a overland map, holds all kinds of wondrous locales and deadly encounters for adventurous characters to explore. So if we flip back here, as you can see, we've got a bunch of different things that's going to happen in these different hexes, as you can see here. Now, one thing that's cool about this, if you've got a blank space, maybe in a similarly uh, designed campaign setting, uh, you know, a lot of times those hexes are blank. If you want to add something to it, you can just attach those to it. I think that's pretty neat. And say, instead of that blank hex, we have got the Wood of Hungry Roots, a place of grievous pain. So, very neat. Uh, again, lots of content in this thing. And then we've got Here There Be Monsters, the Anzu. Cool looking old piece of art here. So, you've got monsters. You've got the Death Turtle. Great looking. Nexus Lurker. And what else do we have? The Thunder Chicken. This is a huge chicken about the size of a small pony. Uh, and it can do a Thunder Squawk, which is brutal to you, but very neat and very reminiscent of the old school zines with the phylactery. I'm looking forward to the second issue. But, you know, as I'm going through it, we've got NPCs. We've got magical items. We've got some neat uh, weapons. We've got a small adventure. We've got... Uh, like a small campaign setting. We have magic potions. Uh, some of these cults here, pretty neat. 
So overall, it's just it, it's very reminiscent of the old days of the zines, and many people are putting these out nowadays. And uh, I'm glad to see that uh, Planet X Games is right there doing the same. And I look forward to the second one. I do enjoy as well this uh, this hex crawl right here. Hex crawls are awesome, and uh, I enjoy them a lot. So one thing to say about this is just a kind of a side thing. I was looking at some Dragon magazines. And it's just amazing um, how far we've come. And I can only think about someone, uh, you know, a young person back in the day getting an, ep uh, an issue of Dragon Magazine and just pouring through it. You know, they didn't have the Internet to keep up with what's going on, to find out, you know, what new games are out there, read reviews and stuff. So to get that issue must have just been absolutely fantastic for that person. I kind of miss those days. Uh, of not having so much information at our fingertips and really enjoying something like this or Dragon Magazine or any other magazine or zine back in the day. You get this, this is pretty much your gateway into the hobby that you love, and then you just kind of pour through it and absorb everything you've got, everything it's got in it, and maybe you know put it into your game or come up with a great idea or use it in NPC. So just a little bit uh, a thing that I was thinking about when it comes to um, zines and magazines from the old days. It's old man reminiscent is what it is. But uh, no, there it is, the phylactery. I look forward to issue number two, like I've said. Thanks for watching this. Check out this, uh, you know, pick this up, and uh, let me know what you think about it. Um, again, link down in the description. I'll have a pinned comment. And um, yeah, thanks a lot, and stay tuned for the next video.